Now, speaking in one of the churches in Muranga County, that was yesterday at AIPCA Kangara Church in Gitugi, Muthioya, sub county, yesterday. Senator Kangata said that people of the region have more pertinent issues that needed to be addressed before they accept the BBI document. What can be done to popularize this BBI, especially in the Mount Kenya region, in regions like this where we have so many who still feel that their needs have not been addressed? These questions we shall be addressing right now. Very good morning to you. Thank you very much for um, keeping it Y254. If at all you are just joining us, this is Y in the morning. We are, you're just in time for the uh, discussion of the day. As to talk about politics. Joining me is Kennedy Murunga, who is a legal and political analyst, also a council member at the Law Society of Kenya branch here in Nairobi. Uh, Ken has been with me since uh, we started. Now we continue with him. Karl Marx shall be joining us in a bit. Ken, thank you very much for uh, being with us, Bado. Um, and uh, sorry for that. Uh, when w w let's delve into politics, but even as we do that, uh, we would like to uh, uh, make sure that we also participate with you. Make sure that you also stay with us in this conversation. Give us your take. The hashtag on Twitter is Y in the morning at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel. Make sure that you engage with, with us on this discussion. When Karl Marx shall come, we shall, uh, he, he, he shall join you. But in regards to what Senator Kangata said, that the BBI document is still not yet accepted in the region, saying that people have some pertinent issues that needed to be addressed before they can accept the BBI. What is the possible solution towards this? I think there is a common shared view mm. that the BBI process has not been inclusive across board there is a sense of feeling amongst Kenyans that they have not been part and parcel of the BBI process. And so that in itself gives a lot of resentment to this document. Of course, the politics going on around is some groups are oscillating around uh, BBI and those who are opposed to the BBI process. So there is a political aspect. But for me, I think the biggest, uh, uh, biggest point that uh, Kenyans have been making is that they do not feel that the BBI was inclusive. Although they agree that it is a good process and it's a good document. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm looking at what the Senate Majority Whip had uh, also said and I quote I just stated the plain truth for the present. That was the letter that he had um, uh, sent to the present to know and to take remedial action. People in the mountain region want some bedeviling, bedeviling problems to be uh, addressed first and the BBI process to come in second. What do you think about that? I, uh, in a sense, I agree with him, but I will differ with him uh, shortly. Mm. Indeed, if we want uh, the BBI process to continue, and that started from the handshake between the president and the uh, right honorable Ray Lodinga. Then could we have gone back to the ground, back to the people, and found out what are the inherent problems that they are facing? And for central Kenya, they feel disenchanted, dissatisfied with the BBI process for many reasons. First, they feel their leaders were not included. They feel the president is not, uh, or rather the government is not giving development, or uh, you know, they are not feeling the development aspects uh, on the ground. But you know the BBI, the, b before we got to this point, before we went to bombers, they were moving around the counties. And it was um, uh, public participation was done, um, the views were collected during uh, that whole period before bombers. In fact, for, and, and I must reiterate, for mm. central Kenya, they have, there has been no point where they say BBI is not a good document. They agree with the document. That is what I hear. The only problem is they feel that there are certain aspects that have been neglected and they want to sort of 
have that addressed first, even as we talk about BBI. So, if I was the president and, I, and, and together the right Honorable Prime Minister, probably we will go and listen. You will remember that, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of leaders in central Kenya are faulting, uh, are faulting uh, the president. Mm. Every time they meet, it is not a discussion. It, they always seem to say that it is a shouting match with the president giving them feedback. So probably these leaders must be included in a discussion for them to feel part and parcel of this BBI process. Do, do you think then, it, 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 will it sail through to the end? Will it get to the point where we get to a referendum and the BBI succeeds? We are way ahead of schedule. Uh, BBI is way ahead of schedule. And I can tell you for sure that moment will come. Um, I mean, we are now going through the signature verification process, which should be concluded in the next few days, Re few weeks. Regardless, regardless. Yes. yes, the signature verification process, yes, it is ongoing. But that doesn't mean that it will pass. Is it, it, it does, does having um, signatures verified mean that the document has been passed? No, I think, uh, well... Thank you for that correction. I think what we are saying is that at least the BBI discussion will be put to a vote in a referendum. But will it sail through? Whether it sails through or not <laughs> depends <laughs> with what is going to be done between now mm. and the time when this document will be put to now, vote. I, I, I'm looking at what her, the senator said, and I quote, unless we see major political party leaders like the president himself, Moses Wetangula, Mosalia Mudavadi, Kalonzo Musioka, uh, Dr. William Ruto, and Raila Odinga in the forefront drumming up support for the process, then it will not sail through. Now, that is a political blackmail because uh, not all these leaders will support the BBI process. And they have a right to oppose it, including the deputy president. He does not need to agree with the process. So, one cannot say that until all these leaders support the BBI process is when central Kenya will embrace this document. Cohesion, cohesiveness. That cohesiveness will not be achieved in the manner that uh, the senator is suggesting. The cohesiveness is in terms of agreeing with the proposals, disagreeing mm. with the proposals, and letting Kenyans decide on how to proceed. I can tell you for sure, central Kenya is one of the biggest beneficiaries in the BBI process. First, and, uh, uh, and even if you were to look at it uh, keenly, if there is a community that has sort of penetrated other communities in terms of their investments and growth and, and what is a central Kenya community. And this handshake process that led to the BBI was a sort of discussion about ensuring continuity and, and peace uh, especially during the elective uh, processes. Mm. And so, and you will agree with me that the, uh, the, this, uh, a lot of uh, people from central Kenya, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, be tribal, but a lot of people from central Kenya will always face the brunt of election violence. That is what the BBI process is, is, is going to cure. And leave alone that, even in terms of uh, the review of boundaries in the constituencies, Central Kenya is going to get the biggest share. So I feel that a lot of leaders have not shared the potential benefits that Kenyans are going to enjoy at large with the BBI process. And I can tell you for sure in the next few days, mm -hmm. we are going to see more discussions. You remember yesterday the Prime Minister has been crisscrossing the country. A few weeks ago, a few days ago, he's been in central Kenya. Mm -hmm. He was in Muranga. He was in uh, Kiambu. He was in Nyeri. Just in a week. And when the president... The and, 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 and I was looking at the multitudes. Uh, we have images of uh, what happened yesterday uh, the, the, uh, the, the, that were also trending online uh, where he was speaking at a, at a rally. So many people came in. Music, nobody can stop reggae. Uh, uh, yes, and... Uh, that is... Now we are getting into the election process and the BBI discussion. Remember... When the opponents of this BBI process have actually been crisscrossing the country uh, telling Kenyans to oppose this document, you've not seen the Prime Minister or any of the proponents, including the President, going out to 
popularize this document. You wait until that time comes. Should, 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 should the president try and get to the central region and get their votes on the BBI? I think he should. And why I'm saying this is that uh, if there is one, if there is the biggest legacy that President Uhuru Kenyatta is going to leave this country, it is the BBI uh, process. The BBI process that entrenches peace, that entrenches good relations between communities, development and leadership and economic growth, basically. The biggest legacy for President Uhuru Kenyatta is the BBI process. And I would hate to imagine that in his backyard, mm. that is where the BBI process is facing the biggest uh, opposition. Yet, 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 yet is, is, is it a cause to, uh, uh, to, to worry when you see that he, till now he has not yet tried um, to you know, popularize the BBI in his own backyard with Senator Irung Kangarta saying this, that uh, as some people argue that Dr. Ruto has been excluded in the BBI push, but I wish to say that it was him who ran away by failing to obey his boss. And he said also that a majority of political leaders, like the president himself and many others, uh, and here we're talking about the NASA principles, together with, the doc with Dr. William Bruto, that they have to be at the forefront to drumming up support for the BBI, and if not, it will not see the light of day. I think uh, I agree that the president needs to reach out to the leaders in central Kenya, mm -hmm. have a discussion with them, listen to them, hear where the problems are and most importantly he has to reach out to his deputy president not so much to gain consensus but to mm -hmm. even listen to him a lot of proposals that are being brought by uh, the, the deputy president are valid no, but those now are that issues he, that now that he Kenyans, hasn't i think it is still too early and not no, no, not much time has been lost remember we are not yet we don't have a document final document in terms of a uh, a referendum question so when and until we have that referendum question is when we'll see a lot of consensus that will be built around mm -hmm. the document but we must not forget that this is a political process and a lot of uh, politicians are also trying to test their, their their strength and their abilities and their might and some will look at it and see that probably this is the right time for me to oppose this document or probably this is the time for me to oscillate and partner around a certain candidate for their own interests uh, in 2022. Well, if, 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 if you're saying that it's not yet too late for someone like the DP, is it too late for him? Is it too late for the president to, reach, to try reaching out to him? And as a matter of fact, who should reach out to who in the first place? <laughs> I think the president, as a symbol of unity, uh, brings out, brings every Kenyan together should reach out to any yeah. of his allies who okay. uh, express this discontent mm -hmm. with probably his uh, the steps he's taking or the BBI process but time is not lost if you ask me mm. we still have time we still have time to build consensus we still have time to build discussions let the BBI not be a discussion around leaders this is our document and I Kenyans must own it but or it oppose is. it yeah, but it is. It, 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 it is the leaders who brought it to, to Kenyans. Yeah, because we they have they are bringing the factions. Now we have UDA. And we have Jubilee. Yes, and uh, we do not want that kind of political differences to surround this document. Mm -hmm. Let the BBI document be a national discussion beyond politics, beyond political parties, beyond political leaders, because this is one of the documents that I think represents the views of Kenyans. I know that we've not had a civic education, and the government must now put in place a budget for civic education, let uh, civic leaders and uh, civil society groups discuss this document with Mwanainchi on the ground. Correct the areas that we feel ought to be changed, mm -hmm. and let the document uh, be put to a vote. Now. Um what about the areas that uh, the Wananji feel as though they need to be reconsidered in the document? Um, is it too late as, as far as we have reached now to think, reconsider such things? I think it may be too late to achieve full consensus on a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Remember, 
uh, we are now going on with the verification of signatures. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, a referendum question will be published. So there may be just some small room for, uh, for, for discussion on, and you may never achieve con full consensus. It's not possible. People don't agree on the smallest of things. So whatever document we have, remember even the 2010 cons constitution, we had a lot of disagreements with it. A lot of uh, leaders right now opposed it. We are building on it. And constitutional process, constitutional making is a continuous process. Now, let me quote Honorable Raila Odega. He said, and I quote, they say Raila is analog. They said children will have laptops. He has forgotten that now he is giving out hand cuts and wheelbarrows. <laughs> what are the jobs, uh, a state of the, uh, 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 where are the jobs and where the state of the art is stadia? Your thoughts on that? Hey, hey. I agree with the Prime Minister. I agree with the Honorable Raila Odinga. I remember you mentioned this earlier yes. on. Mm. And, uh, and indeed, this is uh, the chickens have come home to roast, <laughs> to roast. for William, <laughs> for the, the Deputy uh, President. Because he made certain promises. Kenyans uh, can hold him accountable to those promises. And here we are, where the symbol of of development is 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 the wheelbarrow. I'm not I'm not downplaying the importance of those small things because it's it's it supports the the Juakali sector to a large extent. But I think we can do better as a government. Can we set up ICT incubation centers in those areas mm -hmm. in the areas that the president the deputy president visits? Can we set ICT incubation centers and let the youth come up with projects, uh, applications? state-of-the-art uh, ideas that can help. These are the things the that the, the doctor is saying, uh, Dr. Ruta is saying that they are looking at the issues with regards to Anaichi through UDA, through uh, the Hasla Nation, what you're saying. Are you proposing that? What I'm proposing is this, that a wheelbarrow is, is, is and I don't think that when we say the wheelbarrow uh, uh, econ economics or what, it's, it's not, it's symbolic, it's not just the wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. Some of these one inches are empowered by, you know, given uh, some small capital, some, you know, some, uh, you know, I saw somebody who, s who was setting up uh, some small business and he was given a public address system. So this wheelbarrow is not the wheelbarrow, in, is not the true wheelbarrow aspects. It's more about, about uh, empowerment. And but I agree with the, uh, the deputy president to that extent. But we can do better. Now, speaking of which, doing better, can he bring these projects, f not from uh, not as UDA party, but as Jubilee party? Isn't it, isn't it possible to just copy or, or cut and paste to something uh, from that party to Jubilee party? I think we know what has been going on around the <laughs> Jubilee <laughs> party. And, <laughs> and uh, I know that the Deputy President would not want to be confined into within the, within the that circles. small yeah, uh, small environment. And that's why probably he's also thinking beyond Jubilee. Now, uh, Honorable Raila Odega said that there are those who are now trying to blame BBI for Jubilee failures. Is Raila uh, a, a, a minister in Jubilee government? This is what he was saying. Is it is them who are in office using government resources? Now, m m do you think that the BBI is, is it was is what is uh, you know causing all of this? The BBI that is causing all this confusion. And are these accusations even true, or are they just excuses? <laughs> I think these are excuses because I have not seen that the dip, that the prime minister has joined the government or that is exercising certain powers within the Jubilee government. Mm -hmm. Last I checked, we still have a deputy president. Last I checked, the president is still in office. So let us not engage in this blame game process or to even blame the BBI. I think the intention of the president to reach out to the, uh, to the prime minister and have a handshake and uh, settle all the political scores and think beyond election and think about solutions for this country, that is where we ought to be. And I would have loved that the deputy president would have been on board this kind of discussions. Now, speaking of the deputy president, this is what he said uh, as a rejoinder. Nataka niambie huyo jamaa wa vitenda wili. 
He said, nataka nebo jamaa awache madharau, awache kiburi. Eti kwa sababu wewe ulizaliwa uh, kama mtoto wanaibu wa rais. Unadharau biashara ya watu wengine. What do you think about those sentiments? I think uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's political language. I think uh -huh. uh, one cannot really say that uh, Raila was born into a certain uh, family. Raila has, Elodinga has brought himself uh, and regards himself as uh, common Mwanainch and we, his history is very clear what he has done and what he has gone through. Mm -hmm. Any of us and uh, those of us in the political sphere know what Honorable Raila Odinga is. He is the farthest from dynasty than anyone else that I know. Is he, we can even call him a hustler? I mean, he has suffered in the trenches. He has <laughs> been detained in, in prison for a long time without trial. Yeah. He has come out. He has been in the opposition. He has been in government. He has been the prime minister. He's a self-made person. Hustler, yeah. You can say he qualifies <laughs> to be there. You can call him a hustler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, um, the, so this is uh, um, what Frank Mugo is saying on uh, Facebook morning, uh, watching live from Baricho, Kirinyaga County, Kenya most, uh, Kenya is divided now more than ever. BBI is dividing Kenyans more than unite, y uniting them. That is Frank Mugo. We have a uh, a man, James, and I say, good morning, guys. I'm following the show from uh, County 001 Mombasa. We are together. Benjamin Omucheni, Omuchen, is saying, morning to you. Watching from Kawangwara, stage two, Ndani, Pamoja, na Wakilisha. A man, James, and I say, request, uh, Ametuma uh, Salamu Pale. Hilary Rotich is saying, good morning. Watching from Kericho. Thank you. Uh, thanks to our Lord. Back to studio. Okay. Victor uh, saying morning too, watching the show from Alego, Karapul, Siaya County. Wait, wait. Uh -huh. We have um, Kevin Babu, we have Bay De Ashley also watching. Thank you very much, watching from Machakos. We appreciate your feedback. Make sure that you, give, you tell us what you think about these stories and also tell us where you're watching us from. Now, let's head over to um, the next issue Nairobi County. Such a hot debate. <laughs> Anne Kananu. And I, I don't know if my director can be able to pull up the tweet by Nelson Harvey. Um, let me just g get it also here. The tweet by sent out by Nelson Harvey in regards to uh, Anne Kananu's um, swearing in. This is what your president said. The LSK would be the ideal petitioner to challenge the fraud that is the swearing in of Anne Kananu as deputy governor of Nairobi County. Pres the problem is that Deep State will appoint a lawyer to take over and withdraw the petition as soon as it is filed. You're smiling. What do you think about that? You said he's a I, very I, straightforward I guy. agree with the, with the president and I share in his frustrations. I think uh, the the we were we were conducted to you know taken through some charade of a vetting exercise conducted by the county assembly of nairobi in respect to Anne kananu's uh, nomination why, 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 okay even even as you continue tell us why you call it a charade it's a charade and i'm saying that for this reason one that at the time when the case that challenged the nomination of Anne Kanan was withdrawn recently. Mm. There was already a declaration of a vacancy. There was a declaration and a gazettement by the IEBC of a vacancy for the DG. office of the governor of Nairobi. Now, mm. why the IEBC made such a declaration is very simple. That there was no substantive deputy to act in in the place of a DG and therefore be nominated as a governor. Mm -hmm. So there was a vacancy. Now, we have already crossed, we have now gone beyond the vetting process with the declaration. It means that there was no governor and there was no deputy, and that is why the speaker was acting in the position of governor. governor. So how can we then reverse a, a constitutional process 
and then start vetting somebody for the position of deputy governor when there was already a declaration of a vacancy. These are illegalities in law. Um, when, when, when you look at the swearing in of uh, Anne Kananu, uh, which was uh, actually accumulation of, uh, it was a tense moment. We had behind the scenes where you have intrigues that kicked off with the impeachment of Mike Sonko, which we shall touch on later on. Uh, but now the IEBC had uh, 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 indicated that it will conduct a by-election in Nairobi next month. Yes. Do you see this forthcoming? Of course, now we are in a legal conundrum because one does not know how to proceed then. We have, an, uh, we now have somebody who has been cleared and uh, now nominated to act as, and sworn in actually to act as deputy governor. And we can argue then thereafter that he can now be sworn in further to act as a governor. <laughs> now, then there will be no, no need, <laughs> need for, for no a need by -election, for a election, which w is an illegality under law. Now, for instance, one of the simple things is this, that uh, the custodian of the seals of uh, a county is a governor. Mm. Now, if you look at the County Governments Act, the person, once, 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 uh, once the DG is, is, is appointed, the document has to be sealed by the governor to confirm the appointment of the, of the DG governor. Who's going to do that? Okay. Now, is this supposed, this, this is supposed, supposed to happen, um, uh, right now. Mm. See, we have the, uh, uh, he, he, she was sworn in, but now we have the speaker who is currently acting now uh, as the governor. Uh, does also the, sp uh, the speaker also have a role to play in this whole mix-up? Um, does he have mandates that can be able to help Kananu rise up the ranks? Of course, now, uh, basically, the speaker should vacate uh, uh, once the, the, the timelines expire, yes. he ought to vacate. Is it uh, 60 days? 60 or? days. He yes. ought to vacate his office. Mm -hmm. But that was contemplated if an election was going to be held. Now, the, if we, we are taking the direction where there is no going to, there's not going to be an election, mm -hmm. then probably what should happen is the speaker should vacate his office automatically and let uh, vacate office of acting as governor and let Anne Kananu act, which is again a legal quagmire. Let me quote what an, an, an nominated MCA, that is Mary uh, Njambi, she said this, and I quote, It is not what we expected to happen, but we have no choice. The government appears to have taken con full control over uh, Nairobi, and the best thing for us is to support the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Something that the LSK president talked about, and in his own words, he, he talked about deep state. What do you think about that? Well, what I know is that, uh, is that I am of the view that probably the government did not want to conduct a by-election mm -hmm. for one reason or the other. Probably they did not want to subject themselves to another defeat like what happened in Msambweni. I suspect so. Well, what about yet another reason looking at the amount of money that could be spent at a by-election? The me funds, tell you, the expenses. Taxpayers have... Uh, these are taxpayers' funds. This is our funds. And the government cannot suddenly say they want to, 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 to sort of uh, engage in uh, cost-cutting measures here <laughs> and misuse money there. <laughs> this is an electoral process that Kenyans must... must uh, it's, in fact, a constitutional electoral process. Mm -hmm. So the government cannot suddenly say, we cannot engage in this constitutional process because we are trying to save money. Uh, so I suspect that there was fear in government and uh, <laughs> that they were going to, they didn't have the perfect nominees for uh, for election not, not, not at least not the ones who could who could be elected mm. and so the fear was that they were going to suffer another defeat so probably that is what informed this but i suspect that but in the coming days there is going to be legal discussions on whether Anne Kananu can act not just in the position of governor but even as as a deputy governor 
because she was and can you imagine that even if uh, if a governor is appointed uh, rather even if even if uh, an election is held then Anne Kananu cannot cannot even sit as deputy governor because the governor has a right to appoint whichever go uh, deputy governor that that uh, he he or she wants. So we are looking at at, at a case scenario. Um, if the by elections take place, mm. the deputy governor has the ability to remove her from office. No, the governor, I mean, yes. has the ability yes. to remove her from office, yes. uh, thereby making this whole process null and void. Nullity, yes. If we have the uh, by-election still, and uh, we have a, a, a governor, uh, will he, if the governor chooses to retain her, will also this will it have an effect on this decision? Now, can you you are making the assumption that if the election were to be held, yes, then let's talk about if the election was to yes, be held. Yes, if the election were to be held, uh -huh. then. Those candidates for governor will also have a running mate, uh, rather a deputy governor nominee in their structure. Isn't that how <laughs> elections how they do it? Yes. And so, can you imagine where somebody is elected as a governor and he has his deputy and then uh, there is a sitting deputy governor in office? <laughs> this is legal confusion. <laughs> It is as simple as this. And can but you imagine, even up to today, there's been no words from either our courts or even from the IBC about its Gazette notice. So, in any case, we are expecting an election to be held. There is a substantive uh, sitting deputy governor in office. What is going to happen? Do you see us going for by-election? We will go to a by-election. It may not be on the 18th of February. We will go to a by-election. Yeah, sure. I know that. I know for sure that uh, if any any Kenyan challenges his election, uh, rather appointment of uh, deputy governor, I think it has high chances of success. Senator, and se one of the most intriguing. Before you proceed, mm. I was really intrigued by one thing. That the vetting exercise was conducted in the morning. <laughs> I know where you're heading to. <laughs> Uh, she was approved, the report was written and adopted by the assembly. And there was a judge who was on standby to swear in Anne Kanano. I cannot imagine that a judge of the High Court of Kenya subjected himself to such an illegal process as the one that was, 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 was held. It was in about around six hours. Six hours. How? And I, I've just heard from legal quarters that the, even the deputy chief justice, acting as a chief justice, may, was not aware of of this swearing-in process. It is the chief justice who will appoint an in a judge of the High Court of Kenya to go and conduct a swearing-in exercise. They are putting putting into question the legal fraternity, the judiciary also here. That raises question and it raises issues that probably the JSC must look into. The, the, the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Mutula Kilonzo, Kilonzo Jr. said this, and I quote, we now have an acting governor who is not elected, pending election, which may not happen, because acting governor Benson Mutula will resign to pave way for the DG who will appoint a deputy. There, this is a terrible and unprecedented legal absurdity. Now, what do you think about this? Um, do, you, do you see I this agree. forthcoming? I agree. It's a legal absurdity. It's, will uh, he resign? He really? has to uh, no, resign from that office of, 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 of governor. You know, he's okay. sitting in a, on an acting capacity. He not just resign. Mm -hmm. I think he not resign. He just has to vacate. It to office. vacate. Yeah, he just has to vacate. Not resign because he's not sitting there uh, in a substantive position as governor. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yet, uh, is it right to say that uh, the law governing the appointment of deputy governors, commenced, which commenced in uh, July 2020, and once is vetted, the person must be appointed by the governor. Um, looking at these laws that we have, that we have, is there a lacuna that 
might have uh, been used that led to this current position that we are in as Nairobi County? Some of the legal situations that we have are unprecedented. And as a, as a, as a drafter, mm. you may not anticipate some of these scenarios while you're drafting the constitution or while you're drafting any laws. So these legal lacunas will continue to be there, but this is now room for amendments. These are, this is room for improvements mm -hmm. to review our laws to be in tandem with uh, the political dynamics. And one of them was the, the, the recent legislation on the appointments of uh, deputy governor. Remember, there was nothing in place then. Okay. Now, uh, still on Kilozo, he said this, and I quote, boardroom leadership. I raised these concerns during the debate on the law, the County Government Act, which was assented by, to by the President on the vacancy on the office of the DG. How is this a case of boardroom leadership in your case? It's and do case. you agree with what Senator Mkila Kilozo said? I agree with him entirely. Yeah. Kenyans, Nairobians were robbed of a process of deciding and electing their governor. <laughs> Somebody was handpicked. In, remember these, uh, and this is very strange, that first there was a court order stopping the, uh, the process of uh, reviewing her nomination or mm -hmm. decision, vetting. There was mm -hmm. a court order. It was so strange that the court order was lifted two day, a few days earlier. The vetting exercise was conducted in one day appointment on the same day i mean this is a boardroom leadership and i <laughs> i can now confirm that probably there is a, a power beyond what we see that decides uh, the leadership probably that's what they call uh, deep state do you do, do you see this connected to the removal or the oust of governor mike sonko you know, when I last sat with you, remember I predicted that Governor Sonko would not go <laughs> home. <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> I wish to. <laughs> I, I, I got it wrong. But uh, of course it is tied because then they knew that there was going to be a substantive replacement in An Kanano. I think what they, they failed to anticipate is the legal questions uh -huh. in her uh, nomination and appointment. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, I would like us to just conclude this conversation here, where you have Tadu Alliance Party, which has already moved to court to contest Kanano's uh, oath of office, term the process and, as illegal and uh, uh, affront to the rule of law. They say this, and I quote, this is what uh, their Secretary General, that is uh, Frederick Okango, said, and I quote, they cannot use the judiciary as a shortcut to get us a governor in Nairobi. The courts are there to serve all of us. We want nothing but a by-election. Now, talk of the judiciary. Is the judiciary an arm of government that you see moving forward shall be independent or should we expect more of more illegalities coming in from the judiciary. And, and what does that say about you know our own our own lawmakers who we expect to make laws that are supposed to benefit Kenyans? Yet we have cases like this happening. I do not want to fault the judiciary uh, entirely, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is a, 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 an issue that is both political and legal. And uh, political processes will always happen. There will always be replacements or political maneuvers to replace and uh, appoint uh, whoever. But what we ought to remember is that can we cast in stone and in law mm. whatever political maneuvers we are doing? Okay. Because uh, if you look, and I've already reiterated, mm. the appointment is not, uh, it was not legal. It was not legal. And I... I, I, I anticipate that the court will, will agree with the, with the applicants in that matter, the Third Way Alliance Party. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. I'm seeing Janet here uh, saying that watching from uh, with a day in Kiambu County, politics is never my cup of tea, but because you have a lot of lies and frustrations, etc. We have uh, uh, Mugo is saying is watching from uh, Baricho, Sam J also, and Asama, good morning. It's a super, super Monday, loving the discussion. 
Thank you very much, um, uh, uh, James. Also watching from Kirinyaga County. We uh, thank you very much for your comments. I'm seeing Hillary, and uh, uh, this is Amy. I'm also Victor and Essie. I'm seeing Kevin, Babu, and Winnie. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a discussion on politics in matters concerning the nation. I was with. Uh, Kennedy Murunga, who is a political and legal expert and, a, and political analyst in regards to matters concerning the nation, the county of Nairobi, and uh, the BBI. Thank you very much, Ken, for finding time to Thank join me this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. And uh, hopefully, I, I don't know, uh, by, by the end of, of, um, of, uh, of February, uh, where do you see the country at? Because by, by then, we, it is expected that all this will have settled down, the by-elections and uh, you know, the, the, the signature verif verifications. If we are going wrong. into election full throttle. Expect yes. more of this. <laughs> <laughs> more of this. More of this. With the BBI and the elections. Oh, well, it's time will tell. Well, this has been a discussion on politics. The hashtag, as always, is why in the morning. Keep uh, the conversation going on our social media pl platforms. Remember, coming up next, we shall have a discussion with Sarah Muni in regards to a career. How best can you set goals for yourself that are achievable and that can take you to the next level? Stay tuned for this and much more. Let's take that break. We'll be back in a bit. Keep it why in the morning.